I haven't gotten into the Halloween spirit in years. I'm too old to go trick-or-treating. I don't have enough friends to do costume parties. I only recently got a girlfriend to do couples costumes. Halloween for me just means gorging on Kit Kats and going to work the next morning. I wanted to play a survival horror game to try and inject some festivity into my veins, and it just so happens that there's a survival horror game on my request list, Escape from Bug Island on the Nintendo Wii. And I'm sure so many people requested it because it's an awesome game and people wanted me to reaffirm how great it is. Right? The game begins with three teens, Michelle, Mike, and Ray, heading to the island of Necronesia. The secret island is full of bugs that evolve differently from the rest of the world, and Michelle is an aspiring entomologist who wants to see the creatures. But it turns out that going to an abandoned island full of mutated animals and literally named Deadland is a bad idea, and soon Ray, the player character, is left fighting for survival against angry hordes of giant insects. And this is the first big problem with the game. It's kind of hard for me to feel bad for these characters when they knowingly and willingly went to an obviously unsafe island for stupid reasons and with zero supplies of their own free will. Mike and Ray don't even like bugs, they only go because they both want to rail Michelle. So these three dumbasses go to Jurassic Park Insect Edition because the ditz wants to see the pretty bugs and the guys want to lay some pipe in the ditz. I don't call Michelle a ditz for nothing, this girl is dumb as soup. She wears a fetishistic schoolgirl uniform to go hiking in the woods, is endlessly upbeat about being on an island of killer monsters, and the first thing she does when they set up camp is wander into the woods alone at night with no light or supplies on an island full of humongous man-eating insects! Ray is a wuss who can't get up the guts to ask Michelle out, and Mike is a stereotypical jock douchebag who only wants to rail Michelle because he knows that Ray wants her. He also has this weird character animation where he keeps cocking and aiming his shotgun at nothing in the middle of random conversation. I hope that every single one of these people die. Mike and Michelle wander off and don't come back, and rather than abandon his dick friends to their fate, Ray goes looking for them. What? That level had bonus objectives? Why the hell does it only tell you the bonus objectives after you've exited a level? You spend nine levels in a row wandering through random ass locations doing nothing except looking for Mike and Michelle. At the end of those nine levels, one of the dumbest plot twists I've ever seen occurs. And then you spend another nine levels wandering through random ass locations doing nothing except searching for Mike and Michelle. I'd call the story horrendous if there were a story to deem horrendous in the first place. There is zero plot from level to level other than, I wonder if my friends are in the next stretch of identical looking empty forest. Here's how combat works. You have melee weapons and projectile weapons, and despite each type of weapon using radically different controls, you can only use one at a time. To use a melee weapon, you stop dead in your tracks, hold the B button down, and swing the remote vertically. And it has to be vertically or else it doesn't count. To attack overhead, you stop dead in your tracks, hold B, push the control stick forward, and then swing the remote vertically. To attack downward, you stop, hold the control stick down, hold B, and swing the remote vertically. You have to stand still for every attack. You can't launch attacks of any kind if you're moving. If you do any of those motions, while while holding a projectile weapon, nothing happens. To use a projectile weapon, i.e. rocks, you hold the A button to enter a first person mode where you move with the control stick and aim with the cursor. Then you hold B, now the pointer is disabled and moving the control stick adjusts your aim, but only by a certain amount. While holding B, you swing the remote downward to throw a projectile and you swing the remote harder to increase the projectile's distance. Likewise, if you try using a melee weapon in the first person mode, basically nothing happens because the poking attack in first person is very inaccurate, hard to aim, and appears to do significantly less damage than just a normal attack. It took me over a minute just to explain how to use basic attacks. This is the only Wii game I've ever played that actually hurt my wrist, because swinging the remote vertically is awkward, you have to launch a lot of attacks, and you have to swing the remote hard to get any decent distance out of the rocks. The control scheme is ridiculously overcomplicated, and that's before you get to how damn stiff the controls are. You can only run straight forward. Moving the control stick to either side has you turn in place rather than just run in that direction. This control scheme has always sucked nards, but Resident Evil did it, so that makes it okay. And you thought the walking controls suck now? At least the camera stays behind you! Just wait until you're indoors and suddenly the camera is locked in place, immediately radically changing your perspective and completely disorienting you. In short, you can barely freaking move, let alone maneuver around enemies. You can dodge roll to either side by swinging the remote or nunchuck, 
object, and you'll frequently do this on accident while trying to launch attacks. The controls also get stuck to where you throw nothing but overhead attacks as you're trying to move. In first person, the cursor's controls are ludicrously oversensitive, making it difficult to line up shots, but then the cursor becomes nigh non-responsive if you aim too far to the side. You have to fight the controls to line up shots and regularly exit the first person mode to realign yourself with your target. The controls are so miserable that combat is just deeply annoying. It's not hard, it's just annoying. Most of the enemies fight you one on one, and these guys are easy because they just run up to you and stand there hitting you, giving you ample opportunity to bash their heads in with minimal resistance. Yeah, you start the game out with nothing but a pointy stick, and it still kills the giant praying mantises in just a few hits. Every now and then you'll run into flying enemies that just have the nicest tendency to sit still and let you huck rocks at them. That overhead attack is damn useless 9 times out of 10. The only tricky enemies are the Amazon lizard women. No, really, there's enemies in the game that are specifically called Amazon Lizard Women. Because you have to throw a bag of sand into their face to stun them long enough to butcher them with whatever melee weapon you have on hand. That's the most complex the combat ever gets, and it's only tricky because the aiming controls blow ass and you have to land a headshot. You don't get anything in the way of cool weapons either. Projectile weapons basically just means rocks, and every melee weapon is a blunt object that just replaces the previous blunt object. What I really hate are the damn crickets and spiders! These enemies travel in swarms of probably at least a dozen or more are very fast, leap to attack you from good distances, and come at you from a full 360 degrees. You, meanwhile, can barely move, barely turn, flinch every time you take damage, and can only launch attacks in a straight line. The only way to fight them is to stand in one place, impotently swinging your weapon in one direction, basically hoping the enemies run into it by accident, constantly stopping due to being hit or having to shake off one that's jumped onto you, and then having to chase the little bastards down once there's only a few left. Come here, you little shit. Come here! You're given a can of bug spray for the swarming enemies, but it has a range of like two inches and does almost zero damage. Oh, come on. Just die already, you little... Ah, screw it. You can just run away from the bulk of the enemies because crickets, spiders, giant mantises, frogs, they're all too slow to chase you. It gets to the point your default mode of going through levels is to just run away from every enemy and only fight the three or four enemy types that are fast enough to chase you. It's not that the combat is hard, you take damage slowly, dish damage quickly, and the game outright showers you with healing items, the combat is just such an inconceivable pain in the ass that you don't want to do it. The game gives you a flashlight that attracts bugs if you leave it turned on in exchange for being able to see more of the level, but I can see and navigate perfectly well with the flashlight off, and there's only two or three levels out of 18 where the flashlight actually improves the distance fog anyway. This thing is useless. Your only reward for actually doing combat and completing side objectives is purple fragments. Purple fragments carry over onto a new save if you beat the game and start over, and once you've collected enough fragments, the game will start dropping bonus items, many of which are in secret caves. Here's the thing though, you need thousands of purple fragments to get any of the decent items, so even if you fight all the enemies and grind the fragments, you won't start seeing these items until your third or fourth playthrough, at least. I barely forced myself through this awful game a single time. I can't fathom going through it another two times just to get a pendant that'll make my fourth playthrough easier. You're supposed to grind out these items to get a good ranking at the end of the game, which doesn't do anything except let you start with the samurai sword on the next time that you start a new game. So your reward for doing well in the game is getting to play the game again. Yay. Every single level's objectives boil down to grabbing a few items and then dashing for the exit, and every semi-important item or point of interest is marked on your map. The entire game is just walking blindly from glowing dot to glowing dot, pausing only to fight the few enemies that you can't run away from. This is Escape from Bug Island! walking straight to the exit. You figure out quickly that you can't skip any of these markers. Miss the lighter in the second stage? Well, kiss mid-level checkpoints goodbye. Try to finish the third level without grabbing the scythe? Congratulations, you get to track back across the entire level and back because the exit is blocked without it. To add on to the boredom, most of the levels outside of level 2 are just tight linear corridors with an occasional maze, and even level 2 is just a largely empty field. In level 2, you meet Harry, a nerd who bitches about everything and brags about how smart he is, and Lynn, a complete bitch looking for her boyfriend who endlessly berates the people trying to help her for not tearing the bugs asunder with their bare hands. Congratulations, game, your record of zero likable characters is still intact. But Harry is immediately killed by a giant gorilla! 
two levels, and the game's already sick of that whole Bug Island thing in its title. You fight this polygonal, poorly textured, chunky monkey at least six times that I can remember off the top of my head, and all you do is try to huck rocks at its head while it jumps up and down on you. Levels 3 and 4 are nothing except walking along one linear path. Level 3 has some large bugs, and level 4 has two more fights with the gorilla, and that's the full extent of actual gameplay because all the enemies just ignore you while you run past. In level 5, Mike gets knocked off a bridge by a giant spider and dangles for dear life while Michelle faints and gets dragged off. To save Mike, you run along another empty straight path of a level. And then Ray just runs past Mike and lets him die. Mike, no! See you in hell, douchebag! It's probably a good thing there's almost no voice acting in this game because Ray doesn't sound too upset at his best friend dying. Mike, no! <laughs> Level 6 is where you're introduced to the Amazon Lizard Women and a swarm enemy that kills you in a single hit, and that's just trial and error to get around. Level 6 also annoyingly has a critical item that's not marked on the map, which forces you to tediously trudge over the entire level looking for it. Then a sandworm eats Lynn and her boyfriend Robert. I kinda liked Robert. He never talked, and we didn't know a single thing about him. Level 7 is an empty maze. You just wander around until you stumble across an exit. This level you run into canine men that die in a few hits because nothing says horror like immediately poning everything in sight. So guys turn into dog hybrids and women turn into supermodel lizards. This island is so confusing. Level 8 is a ridiculously short run through a ruined temple. Michelle gets attacked by the giant gorilla and then runs outside directly into where she knows the gorilla is standing! Brilliant! Level 9, you have to- OH SHIT! Uh, crap! Ass! Balls! Ass balls! Suck! Balls! Off! The dicks! Anyway, you escort Michelle to the end of the stage through a horde of spiders. She's supposed to stop and yell hey if you get too far away from her, but her AI is, not surprisingly, incredibly dumb, and often she just stands in place bitching at you to slow down as you stand a foot away from her. Right, so remember when I said this game had one of the dumbest plot twists I had ever seen? Well, here we are at the twist. At the start of level 9, you find Michelle's book that told her all about the island. It's bookmarked on a page that says that a magma flow underneath the island combined with the island's underground conductive rocks has produced a rip in the space-time continuum. Michelle, did you bring us to Jurassic Park at the behest of a science fiction book? She's dumb enough, I'd believe it. A huge boss monster knocks Ray off a cliff, and Ray wakes up back at the beginning of the game with his full inventory. This happens out of nowhere. This game, which has not had a single supernatural or sci-fi element aside from mutated animal life, pulls a freaking time machine straight out of its ass and then forces you to play the entire damn game over again! What really bugs me, apart from the fact that time travel isn't foreshadowed at all, is the ridiculously half-assed explanation the game gives. A natural magnet sends people back through time. Did Ozzy Osbourne have a writing credit on this? It would have been a great twist if Michelle had organized the trip to the island specifically to use the time portal so that this thing would have some actual function in the plot, but no, it's just a transparent excuse to stretch the game out to feature length because it only took me two and a half hours to get to this point. They even spoiled time travel on the back of the game's box! Then again, the other taglines on the box are bugs, obstacles, and survive. Boarding out time travel might not have been the worst idea. So now you play every empty, boring as piss, do nothing but walk to the exit level over again, only this time you skip one and a half levels by cutting through the item filled swamp level. It just kills me that the levels are mostly empty and have very little actual gameplay, and the devs were so pleased with themselves that they make you go through the whole thing twice per playthrough. 
On this run, you rescue every single one of the game's hateful characters that you relished getting to watch die the first time around. Before you time travel, Michelle gives you a key to her back, which lets you grab a handgun for your second run through the game. This might have been a cool feature, if not for the fact that the gun is damn near useless! Once you land a few hits on an enemy, they fall down, and you can land a finishing blow on said enemy by standing over them and pressing B. The gun has no finishing move, so anybody you shoot with it just gets right back up a few seconds later. The only effective way to use the gun is to use it to knock down an enemy and then switch to whatever melee weapon you have, but look how freaking long it takes to switch weapons! Why is that process so tedious? The shotgun has the same problem, with the added benefit of having almost no ammo and not even having the scatter shot effect that all shotguns ever have. The only times the guns actually come in handy is for fighting bosses, and believe you me, this game's boss battles so diddly -uck. The only way to damage the giant gorilla boss is to land hits on his head. Even shoving a machete up his dickhole doesn't seem to do anything, not even piss him off. You just run away from him and throw crap. The giant spider boss, you can only fight by running away from him and throwing crap. The giant bug monster in the time cave, you just stand away from him and throw crap. Every boss fight is just very tediously hucking rocks at it, which sucks with the game's horrendous controls. Oh, except for that friggin' sandworm! The only way to damage this boss is to throw grenades at its red areas, the hit detection sucks dong, and you only get five grenades. So you have to run around in the first person mode that controls like ass, trying to use the bug spray on the exploding ants which requires somehow getting into point-blank range of the ant without causing it to detonate, and also spraying it before it crawls away since you can't move and spray at the same time. This allows you to break off its ass and use it as an explosive. Yes, you make hand grenades out of ants. This is an inconceivably tedious process, and it took me half a freaking hour to get enough ant grenades to kill this boss. Again, it's not hard. It's just annoying! The big change through the second half of the game is that they start throwing more enemies at you at once. You'll have to fight enemies like the lizard women or flying bastards while standing in pools of crickets or spiders in the same area. This is where the combat gets infuriating because you've got enemies that you can't flee mixed in with swarms that you can barely fight. You're trying to land a damn hit on the main enemy, you're flinching constantly from the crickets attacking you from all sides, you can't maneuver because you flinch so much, and it takes several minutes of getting the shit beaten out of you to thin out the swarming enemies enough to kill the main threat. So all you do is impotently flail your arms around hoping out of sheer luck you land enough hits to make it past. You'd think this is where the game would get SOME degree of difficulty since the combat becomes completely broken, you'd be wrong, because I had at least two dozen healing items on hand at all times through the entire second half of the game, and this is with me just running through the levels to get them over with as quickly as possible, not even bothering to look for healing items because I just wanted the damn game over faster. The game has so many health pickups that any pretense of difficulty gets flushed down the drain, so again, it's not hard. It's just annoying! In the last few levels, you discover that Robert is the entomologist who wrote Michelle's book about the island. He reveals that everything on the island mutates as it's exposed to a gas from the Time Cave's bug monster. He's also ecstatic that you found the time portal because nobody believed him when he said that magnets would let you time travel. On that note, before we can ask if this guy's a real doctor, he dies from the gas. And then Lynn calls a helicopter to evacuate everybody off the island, and you're only just mentioning you can do this now, you stupid bitch! Sensing that her crown as King Idiot is in danger, Michelle listens as Ray finally confesses his love for her, and then immediately brushes it off to yell at him to find her something presentable to meet her favorite author. Are... are you kidding me right now? Beat to shit and trapped on an island full of mutated killer insects, and she's nagging me to pull out a new set of clothes from my ass. Ray, I say this to you as your friend. You can do better. What is it with this game and female characters? On one side we have Michelle, a moron who has yet to do or say a single intelligent thing. On the other side we have Lynn, a spiteful whore who denigrates everybody trying to help her. Both wear fetish outfits, and in the middle we have naked lizard women with supermodel physiques whose mere existence is never explained. The helicopter doesn't have enough room for everybody, so Ray has to flee to a boat. 
that was nowhere to be found at the start of the game, but now exists because reasons. Holy shit, they had the foresight to keep Robert's body lying here. I'm sure he's not coming back, but it doesn't hurt to check. And this is where we come to the one part of the entire game that I actually like. Robert comes back to life as a giant fly monster, the transformation sequence is creepy, the creature design is genuinely scary, and this is the only boss, no strike that, the only enemy in the entire game that you actually fight. You have to look for patterns, maneuver around attacks, and actually decide when to use each weapon. You're legitimately and actively fighting a monster, not just flailing your arms at stationary enemies, swatting at swarms, or throwing shit at a boss from several feet away. This is the only time the game kind of feels like an actual game, and it's still not great because Robert is nice enough to stand perfectly still for several seconds while I cram Molotov cocktails down his gullet. You kill Robert and escape while the only decently rendered part of the entire game plays. The end. And there's a secret ending that shows Robert's not dead yet, which nobody's certain on how to unlock. I don't know if it's cute or sad that they thought they were going to get a sequel after barely even being able to make half of a game in the first place. So that was Escape from Bug Island, and... Was this even a horror game? It has the graphic design of a horror game, the sullen soundtrack of a horror game, the scare chords of a horror game, but nothing about the game is even remotely scary. You're strong enough to dominate all of the enemies and are inundated with so many health pickups that you can tank damage with no difficulties. There's barely a plot, the controls are utter garbage, most of the levels are just walking down empty halls, the enemies are either way too simple or broken bullshit, the characters, if you can even call them that, are so hateful that you despise being forced to say them in the second half, and watching the game brazenly waste your time by making you play largely empty levels twice per playthrough is just downright insulting. It just feels lazy at every turn. And it sure as hell didn't get me into the Halloween spirit. Another old Hallow's Eve come and gone. Happy Halloween, you guys. May your candy be non-poisoned and your scares be better than this shit.